Node.js has become a go-to platform for building fast and scalable applications, and it owes much of that to its asynchronous and non-blocking input-output model. So, at the heart of Node.js is something called the event loop, which essentially allows the runtime to handle many connections simultaneously without blocking the execution of other code. So, unlike traditional multi-threaded environments, Node uses a single thread to serve all requests, relying on callbacks and event-driven architecture to manage input and output effectively. So, as just an overall diagram here, we have our Node event loop, which is a single-threaded loop that handles requests. These are the incoming requests right here. And let's say we want to check if it is an input or output operation. So Node will check if it's an input-output operation. And when a request requires input and output, then Node will pass it on to the operating system to handle it asynchronously. When this input-output task completes, the event loop processes the callback, executes the callback, and then sends back a response. And the great news is that while the operating system is handling these requests asynchronously, Node is free to handle other incoming requests. And as a side note, if you don't know, under the hood, Node uses something called libov, which is a C library that handles asynchronous input-output operations, so file reads or network requests, via a thread pool. And it does this without blocking the main thread. So basically, Node can process other things. So let's talk about why the event loop works so well. So we have our single-threaded main loop. So that handles the scheduling, timers, and events. Then we have a thread pool for heavy input and output. So basically, Node uses background threads for input-output operations. And then we have non-blocking callbacks. So we don't wait for a task to complete. Instead, we tell Node what to do when it's done. So let's look at a real-world example with some Node code. So let's say we're building a web server that reads files from a disk, which we can see that being done right here. And because this read file method is asynchronous, we can tell by using await and also importing it with the dot promises. Because it's asynchronous, Node can handle many requests without waiting for the file, to, file read to complete, which makes it efficient for input-output operations. So essentially, a request comes in. We have to read the file, which will pass off to the operating system, and then it'll be able to handle other requests that come in. When this is done, it'll be notified, and then we can go back here and send the rest of the data. So this means that even with 1,000 concurrent requests, Node won't block the main thread. And this read file function right here runs in the background and invokes the callback when the file is ready. And this allows the server to handle other connections in the meantime. But of course, this means that Node is not always ideal, and the main reason is for its struggles with CPU-heavy tasks. So think of image processing, large data parsing, or machine learning. But this can also be offset if you use worker threads or offload the work elsewhere. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing. Check out my software and courses in the description. Take it easy.